Hey everyone, my name is Gian Calisi here with John Martirano as always uh, for the eighth session in 2021 of Exploring 3D Experience Works. Uh, so you might have joined us before. Uh, if you have, then you know that we're going to be interacting with you through the chat in the YouTube window. There's a little chat box right on the side here. So you're not going to want to put this in full screen so that you can ask us questions, leave us comments as we go through today's session. Uh, and if you are new to this session or to the series, uh, then you're probably wondering what is 3D Experience Works? Well, 3D Experience Works is our growing portfolio of different apps and tools, uh, all, all part of the Dasso Systems family that we've kind of brought together to provide a complete set of solutions to really any product development challenge that you might face. So that it might be design and engineering, it might be simulation, it might be all the way up to sales and marketing or manufacturing and production. And that product development process in its simplest form is planning, developing and releasing a product. So all those different brands have different apps and tools and features that all kind of trickle into this process in the different phases. And as a SolidWorks user, I'm sure you just you know just how well that SolidWorks helps tackle that second step, the develop phase. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at some of the Anovia functionality. Now we, we've looked at this a little bit before. Anovia is the brand that powers kind of the PDM and PLM, so product data management, product lifecycle management, backbone of the 3D experience platform. So we're going to be looking a little bit of what that product lifecycle management looks like in revision management and branching so that we can show you how 3D experience can make more flexible lifecycle management so that you, you can more easily reuse your existing designs and it really will make it easy to go from a product to an entire product line. And this is the case whether you are using desktop SolidWorks and connecting it to the 3D experience platform with Collaborative Designer for SolidWorks, uh, if you're using 3D experience SolidWorks which is installed right from the 3D Experience platform. It's kind of the pre-connected version of SolidWorks. And of course, the cloud design products that uh, John and I have covered in the past, like 3D Creator, 3D Sculptor, 3D Sheet Metal Creator, and more that if you haven't seen already, you're gonna see some more of those soon. Uh, and those are all fully native to the clouds so right in the browser. And what I'm trying to get at is that this product lifecycle management is it's all the same no matter what CAD tool you use, you know, the, that, that backbone in PDM and PLM is always going to be the same. Uh, and to join us today and explain a little bit about how we can use that backbone to branch out with your designs, we have Andrew Gross, who I'm very excited to welcome out in, out in California. Welcome, Andrew. Hey guys. Yeah. Uh, really, really happy to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me to be on the show. This is really exciting. I love this yeah. show that you guys put together. It's awesome. Yeah, we're happy to have you here. Excited yeah, to see thanks. how how we can go from, you know, a single product to a whole product line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's like the whole idea is, you know, there's these tools that are real specific to the 3D experience platform that really allow us to expand on products or designs that are currently in, uh, you know, say our our in that are on the platform available for collaboration across an entire business company collaborative group. Um, yeah. So, and they all base around like a real, the real simple idea of save as right. Something that, that we use in every single day life. So today guys, John, Gian, uh, we're going to pretend that we all, uh, started a new company where we make hammers. What do you say? Is that all right? Hammer time. Sound good. Yeah. It's hammer, ha time. it's hammer time. It is hammer time. God, I'm feeling old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys remember, this is our newest hammer, right? We just came out with this new hammer product and we're really, really excited about it because we had been using, we've been, had an old design out there in the market for years and we just revised it and this is our new one. And it makes sense, you know, if you have say a hammer, well, maybe we expand the product line, right? So we have a standard claw hammer. We may want to expand that product line and create a ball peen hammer, 
right? So, Gian, if you had to create that ball peen hammer, you would probably just design this completely from scratch, even though we had the original hammer, right? I mean, I could. Or I could do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good reason. You could. That's true. And a lot of people probably do. But, yeah. but how would you attack that problem? I mean, I think you already said it. The save as is kind of built for this. You it, know? It's, it's built for this. It's built for it. Yeah. So we save as, right? Maybe we have a hatchet too. And we're able to kind of, you know, save the hammer, save as, and then we can kind of morph or change some of those features, you know, if depending on what CAD product you're using and create an entirely new product to create really like a line of products, right? So this idea of save as, I mean, this is not a foreign concept to anyone or it shouldn't be, right? I mean, do you guys remember the last time you applied for a job? Yeah, it was this job. Uh, I do. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, it, it was this job. That's right. So, uh, so yeah, right. So like, remember, you know, you send your resume and you always want to do a cover letter, right? So like, Hey, I want to apply to a job at Acme engineering for their design engineer job. Cool. So I'm going to kind of write this cover letter and send that off to them. But, you know, say you have, there's another job out there. They're like, Oh, I want to apply to this job too. Right. So maybe you'll scribble the name, uh, Acme engineering off and put A1 engineering, right? We just save, we just save as, use that original cover letter, we save, save as a different name, you know, scribble out the name of the business, or scribble out the, uh, you know, design engineer and, you know, process engineer, but everything else is probably gonna be the same. We're not gonna start all over again. And we use this type of process in engineering all the time, all the time. We wanna reuse designs and reuse work that we've created as much as we possibly can. So back to our story with uh, our hammer and our growing product line, right? So we have three products. So let's take a look at this in kind of a different environment, right? So we have a hammer and that's going to kind of nucleate into, you know, say a, a couple other designs, this ball peen hammer and a hatchet. So the ball peen hammer, we may use that as a core to a, for a couple other products, this uh, a welding hammer and a sledgehammer. And our hatchet, well, we may use that as a base, you know, save as for this axe, right? So, so far, this this kind of makes sense, right, guys? Yeah. And this was a lot of work. We got we did a lot of work to get here, if you guys know. Oh, yeah. Lots so much work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, so the benefits of this are, aren't just about saving time. I mean, that's a big part of it. But it's also like, I mean, Gian, you're, you're, a, you're a graphic design guy. You're an ID guy. Like... This is a really great and very easy way to uh, bring like a consistent design language to a product line, right? Oh, it's super important to uh, that that common language that your brand recognition about beyond just colors, but like the shape and form should really be kind of similar, similar kind of features to your. To, and you'll see that if you if you walk into a hardware store, right? Like, absolutely for sure. Yeah, I mean, even down to like the the radius values right like yeah. you know like everything has to have a radius of like three millimeters but then that has to be consistent across the product line because that's how people get that immediately immediate view right i mean like and you're saying colors wise i mean i know when i go to the hardware store and i'm looking for power tools i know to look for the red ones because that's <laughs> all the ones that all my batteries fit but a lot of people like the yellow ones and some people like the blue ones or even the there's gray ones out there, right? So many different product, but we, it, it, you know, that attracts us visually, but also helps us understand, you know, what's part of the product line. So like you were saying, go down the hardware store, right? We, we know that this is all like a line of products and probably so many elements when we go into the hardware store and see kind of like, you know, all the drills and sawzalls and circular saws that are all part of that kit, you know, so much of that is design reuse, as well as trying to, and branding, it's super, super important. So okay. I figured, uh, if it's okay with you guys, maybe we can talk about how we, how we can kind of create that product structure that we were talking about earlier, this one here. Maybe we can create this um, and show how we would do that on the 3D Experience platform. Sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> cool, yeah. So just to let everybody know, uh, 
this is a video that I recorded. It's made life a little easier. It's easier to show it. Um, and all the images you see, like this hammer, I just superimposed them right into SolidWorks. So this is just a, an easy way to show this. So I didn't have to go clicking through SolidWorks. It would take much longer to give, tell a short story. It would take a long time. So here's our finished hammer, right? And so how would we create kind of you know, we could upper in the upper left corner file save as we could do that. But there are specialized 3D experience tools that are going to help us create that kind of branched system uh, much better than just a simple save as. And, and I'll show you how. So the first thing that we always want to do, you know, in this case, I'm using 3D experience SolidWorks, which is our SolidWorks product that's connected directly to the platform. It's really slick. So over on the right side, this is our task pane, and this is our entryway into the entire platform. So if my company, if we're using the 3D Experience platform, even using other products that are not 3D Experience SolidWorks, like things like X Design, X Shape, uh, 3D Creator, those are th those I can have access and view into all of the designs and products that are used with those products as well, which is pretty pretty cool. It's really really cool. So from here. I'm going to click on, you know, my product, in this case, this hammer. Um, and then down at the bottom, this is where these are the kind of the, the buttons, these new tools that I want to talk about. They're not that new, but I want to talk about how they can really help us create, you know, much better version of Save As. <laughs> OK, so we'll first choose new branch. So we're going to branch off our design and the first branch we're going to create say we want to create that ball peen hammer so what this does is it just basically copies my existing design and now we have a new one which is named ball peen hammer okay pretty simple and yeah. we'll do that again right well we'll do it again we'll do it with uh create creating a hatchet right and after we create the hatchet right we'll also create that axe we we mentioned that you know there was a secondary and tertiary step to branching so we created a, a ball peen hammer, we created a hatchet, and now from the hatchet, we create an ax. All right. And you said secondary and tertiary, but you could really branch out as many times as, you, as you'd want to, right, Andrew? As many times as you want to. Okay. So opening up the ball peen hammer, we may want to branch this out again, creating that welding hammer and branching out again and creating a sledgehammer, just like we did in that, in that kind of infographic that we had earlier. So at this point, we're just punching in a bunch of things and, you know, uh, creating a bunch of save as content. But let's take a look at how that actual product structure looks on the 3D Experience platform. So we're going to kind of fast forward a little bit. Say we've created all these branches and we fully flesh them out with new products. Okay. So back to our original hammer design. When I click, click new revision from, now this does some really cool stuff that we'll talk about in the second half of the show. But for now, we're gonna show this kind of map that it creates for me that I can visualize the entire structure that I've created. And once again, I've just overlaid these kind of, uh, the, these, these graphics right over uh, the frame here so we can kind of see what we built. But you can see that this mirrors what we talked about earlier, right? We have our original hammer that went on to create the ball peen hammer and the ax. And then each of those as like a secondary level. And then tertiary, we've used branch on those products and created that third layer. So a, a good, a question that someone might have, it's like, well, that's cool, but what if I, what if I make changes to that original hammer? Are all of those changes gonna flow upstream to all of these new products and all these all these all these new parts, and the answer is no, right? So that's good. So the purpose of this is to give us, in, in many ways, it's give us the provenance of all of our designs. We can see what kind of say that axe. Say in twenty years from now, someone says, "Hey, you guys created an axe way long time ago in twenty twenty one." Where did that design even come from? So you open up the 3D experience platform and you say, oh, that all was related back to that original hammer. And sometimes that can be really useful when you're creating a product line. So, yeah. 
So I think this is pretty cool. What do you guys think about this? Just being able to create something that you can visually see, you know, say we recruited a new person to our little hammer company. We could very, they could also come right on board and say, ah, I understand this product structure very well just from viewing this. Yeah, I would have to agree. I mean, yeah. look at those um, like images. If they didn't even understand, I mean, the structure itself is pretty easy to understand, but then you add the images on top of it. I think it makes it like a no brainer. And as you said, somebody comes in brand new from the company, it takes pretty, you know, it's not too long to brief them on, uh, you know, the structure of everything. Yeah. And and I mean, and as your designs kind of evolve as a company and you're doing this more and more with more products, you can start seeing like a much bigger picture view of how how your your products are designed and where they kind of come from creatively, which is pretty neat, or even function wise. So on the platform, this is one way of viewing the structure. The other way of viewing the structure is more like a, is a list view, which gives us a, a little graphic on the left, but this gives us a lot more data. We can see the names of our individual parts, but also what revision they are. So we can revise each of these individual uh, elements of our branch, and we would just see another dot in the graphic. It's pretty slick. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, mixing the linear revisions with the branching revisions. Right. It's going to be important as you iterate. <laughs> yeah. So we built this structure. Pretty simple. Listen, we're not blowing anyone's minds with the technology, but it's a really great way to visualize the structure on the platform, right? Which you can access from any device from anywhere. So what I didn't mention, guys, if you remember when we designed this hammer, I didn't mention like kind of our original hammer design, right? You guys remember that thing? Yeah. Oh, I think, uh, I don't know if I, we day. were born yet, Gian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, this was back in the late 20s. So, I mean, all of us in like 1926, 27, I mean, I was just out of college. You know, right. so when, when we designed this hammer, and I mean, you guys, geez, I mean, you, you get, this was your first job. So, <laughs> yeah. so I mean, we've it's been had, a while. And, you know, and we've had this, this version of this hammer for like a hundred years. And we said, we need to update this hammer, right? Remember our, our, our uh, product management guy was like, Hey guys, we need to do something about this hammer. We got to update it. Right. Yeah. Too many people losing their hammer head when they swing too hard. <laughs> they swing too hard. Just, yeah. Yeah. Hammered. They, the head just flew off. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the process. Let's go back in time to a little bit beforehand and let's talk about the process of how we got from Rev A to Rev B here, okay? If you remember our, our product manager, he said he brought us this little sketch and was like, guys, this is the future of hammers. It, it's, it's, not, this, it's not just a wooden handle anymore, right? Let's, uh, you know, let's flatten the claw out so it's more like a crowbar. Let's use metal for the shaft instead of wood. You know, everyone seems to be using this rubberized plastic material on everything. So we're like, all right, guys, right? We're like, all right, buddy, challenge accepted. Let's uh, let's let's create some new ideas of what this next generation of a hammer is going to look like. So we have our original hammer design. And if you remember, uh, it was the three of us and a couple other folks on the design team. Each of us were given our, our an option or asked use what we the information we got from our product manager and create a hammer. That, that that kind of fits the bill. So we came up with five different designs, if you remember this, mm -hmm. right? And they're all kind of similar and a little different. So obviously we created five branches and we're using this branching technique um, as for ideation. As opposed to creating a product line, we're using it for ideation. It's a really great way of using branching. So if you guys remember a few of these designs, you know, they, they didn't cut it. Right. I was going to say, I mean, that yellow one, that? that yellow, that neck on that yellow one. Oh, it looks so good. What about you, Gian? You like any one in particular? I mean, the first one, I don't know what, what was up with him. He didn't have too much creative juices that day, I guess, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely it looks just not. like the, it looks just like, the, it looks just like the proposed design. Yeah. Not a lot of creative juices. There. <laughs> hey, they can't all be winners, but I think we got a couple. <laughs> we do. We do got a couple of good winners. <laughs> we do. We do. So say two of the five, we're going to be like, okay, let's move forward with these as, as our design, right? So we may want to take some design elements from one, some design elements from the other, 
and kind of merge those together. And then that's how we kind of came up with the hammer, the new hammer design that we are now, that's now at Home Depot so or something, right? You basically get the best of both worlds, right? product right this new hammer and have it fit into the stream product wise of our original hammer design right which is a rev a it'd be really great if this was rev b because you know our rev a you know that's uh what a product number zero 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 one was the first thing we ever made but now we've got all these other products but we want to try and keep that same kind of design history right so instead of it being a totally disjointed part or product it would be the it'd be good, great if it was the same product, but just the the second revision of that product. That'd be pretty slick, and that's what we're able to do in the three on the three D three D experience platform with another tool called New Revision From. So I figured I'd go back into SolidWorks and show you that methodology. What do you guys think? That sounds good to us. I mean, cool. Let's check it out. So I was able to find the original SOLIDWORKS CAD drawing from 1926 of this hammer, which is pretty amazing, right? Um, it's a 100-year-old CAD file, very old. 100-year-old CAD file. <laughs> Around 100 years ago. <laughs> so, How do they had, they had solid parts back then? <laughs> yeah, it's solid, yeah it was SOLIDWORKS. I mean, it was just basically extrudes and cuts, but hey, you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So again, we go into the platform here um, and we're gonna access it in the same way, right? We select our product and create a new branch. So we're gonna create a bunch of new branches, right? One for each concept that each of us designed. So we're creating branches, we're looking, we're saying, hey, okay, these are all gonna be the different ideations that we already talked about, the different kind of concepts. We're just saying, creating concept one, two, three, four, and five. Five. And each of us on our design team kind of owns one of these branches. And right, it was our job to be creative and try and fit the bill of what this uh, this new product line or this new product is going to look like. So we've created all five of those uh, new branches. And now we choose new revision from. Again, we used this last time also just to kind of see a visual view of what our product structure looks like. We have the original hammer and all the concepts. So now is when, so I'll go back, right? Just to remind the audience a little bit, we started with our first hammer. We branched it off five times. We had a bunch of concepts and then we just, we remember, or we not remembered, but we, uh, we nixed three of them. And then we wanted to kind of merge two of our designs to create a new, a new version, a new design. Look at that hammer. hammer. It's just beautiful. Just Gorgeous so proud. Hammer. There was so much work that went into that. Let me tell you. So much work. It was, I mean, God, we were just up all night, yeah. banging our heads again. No, just kidding. Uh, so if we open up concept two, so you can see that concept two here is open and it's grayed out here in the user interface, right? Showing that this is the concept that we're currently viewing, which is pretty neat because if you open up one of the branches, you can see the entire structure too. So what we want to do now is we want to create a new revision, right? A new revision of concept two, and we want that new revision to be concept four, okay? And I want to be clear here. Um, so it's not a merging of features. It's really taking one product and saying, this product over here is now going to be the new revision of this product, if that makes sense. Does that make sense, yes. guys? Yeah. Okay. And then you can make whatever changes after if you if you wanted to include everything. But that wouldn't. So you're saying you're taking going to take concept four and make a new version of that that'll become the Rev B for concept two. But you can still do more things to it, right? It, it, absolutely. That's right. So we're going to make concept four in its current state Rev B of concept two. Okay. I know I'm saying the same words a lot, but I want to make sure we're being real clear. 
<laughs> All right. So by clicking concept four, the platform is going to then ask me, is this the, do you want to make concept four rev B of concept two? And that's what I want to do here. So you can notice the structure. Oh, yeah. So now concept two now has a B revision, right? That makes sense. And we've seen kind of like this merging of these of these products. Okay. So maybe we took we took the elements of concept two we wanted to keep and we put them into into concept four, however we wanted to change the geometry, but we used the geometry from both of these parts to create our new hammer. So we're kind of halfway done, right? So what's the next step, guys? What's the next thing we really want to do? Well, how do we relate it back to our original old hammer? I mean, that, that thing's been with us forever. I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's sad to see it go, but it's not going anywhere, which is nice. It's still somewhere in the doldrums of yeah. the experience platform. Which is good. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's exactly right, John. That's exactly where we want to go. So that is the next phase. So now we've opened up our original hammer. And... We'll go ahead and now choose new revision from for our original hammer, right? So we're going to choose, con we want to make concept to rev B. We want to make that the rev B of our original hammer. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. okay, so we choose concept two. And again, it gives us this overview. Do you want to make concept two rev B now hammer B1? And there we go. Wow. That's pretty that cool. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's really simple. It's, I mean, we're not doing too much, but it's, it's doing a lot in the background to kind of build this structure. So we can see that now hammer, hammer rev B1 is the new design. It has the same product number. It has the same data stream, data history, or similar data history, but we can see, you know, the provenance of that hammer. Right. We can see that this new version we had, we can see all these concepts. Say at some point in the future, we want to flesh out one of these other concepts that we nixed here. This may be great for a different product line or a different brand that we also work with. So we could create additional branches from that as well. So it just creates this great like environment visually, excuse me, of what we've done. And like before, we can also view this. Um, in kind of like a thumbnail view. So we can even see cite the thumbnails of all the parts that were created and how that kind of broke away, they were changed, and then kind of came back to the original stream of the hammer. Okay, so basically, if you didn't already understand it, even though it is pretty easy to understand with the actual um, the tree, this gives you thumbnails and again, makes it even easier to see what came from where. That's neat. Superimpose some of those images. There's already a thumbnail there that you could zoom into, right? Yes, you can zoom into it'll, it, you know, once you create that product in the 3D experience platform, it creates a thumbnail of that product and then you'll be able to view it here. It'll just give you just, yeah, just a thumbnail. So you can just kind of see what it is, whether, uh, so yeah, it kind of does all that for you in the background. Awesome. Sweet. Looks like we got a lot of uh, a lot of hammer jokes oh. uh, in the in the chat right now. Oh <laughs> yes, didn't expect that. <laughs> of course, there's hammer jokes. Hammer don't, don't hurt them. Worry, em. they all nailed it. They all they nailed all it. Nailed it. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, you know, CAD CAM 100. You guys, you guys are way too young for dad jokes, but I appreciate the effort, GM. <laughs> uh, looks like CAD CAM 100 has a. Uh, I guess not a question, more of a comment, just saying that he, that you're right about what you're saying about updating that design, uh, but he thinks that there's a lot of things um, aside from just the look and feel of it, like the life and the life duration and the material and cost over time that would be a little bit better with this newer design compared to the old one. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah, and all of that, yeah, all those properties that we can add to our products, right? Obviously that stays with the product too. So that's pretty neat. That's a great, that's a great point. Really great point. As a pro tip right there. <laughs> <laughs> pro tip. Yeah. All right. So yeah, so I mean, yeah, are there any other questions in the chat? I mean, this you know, it's it's a little short segment that I wanted to show you. It's kind of short and sweet. Um 
Hey, that's how we like it, you know, getting right to the point. Yeah. Um, so no, no other questions at the moment, but uh, <laughs> except for where is my Hummer? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even that, mean? That, that, that reference is that MC Hammer was known to have a Hummer and drove it all around. Oh, really? Where's my Hummer? <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. That's, that's like, that's known. Hammer in a Hummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was that was kind of like the that was that was his that was his thing. Oh boy! Like he was one of the first people to have like a Hummer, at, like after like Arnold Schwarzenegger and drive it around town. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I was, I was a teenager in the '90s. I remember that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Andrew, for. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having yeah. me. This was. No, a lot this of was fun. a lot of fun. I, you know. Obviously, Andrew's on our team, and um, so we always enjoy having people from our team, uh, you know, to come and share what they have to present with us today. So um, if there aren't any other questions, I guess we can go ahead and uh, close things out. So if you enjoyed today's session, of course, you can always learn more by clicking the link in the description, of course, um, and then tune in. Um, for our next session, which is, oh, sorry, special thanks. Before I get to that special thanks, of course, how could I forget? Special shout out to Sarah Zuckerman and Toby Schnars, um, especially, you know, Toby, because it was such short notice for him to help. Uh, we always appreciate uh, them both. Uh, they help us communicate with you. So without them, uh, it really wouldn't be uh, possible to communicate with you. And again, join us next time on September 30th, um, where we have two special guests, Earl Haas and Dick Longoria talking about manufacturing. So we're super excited. Um, this is going to be, I believe, um, our first session uh, talking about manufacturing on um, that side of things. So if you stuck with us, uh, you know, if you've been with us for a long time, we've done a couple in the webinar, right, Gian? But this will be our first time. Yeah, last year. Um, and you know what? It's been long enough. So so we're looking forward to that. And we do, we are part of a cadence uh, where we have uh, live content for you every Thursday at 11 a.m. So the next one, you'd be wanting to check that out as well, is August 26th. Juan Chop is actually going to be diving into sheet metal and solid work, so you'll definitely want to check that one out. I, I certainly will. So, um, and other than that, uh, thank you very much for uh, attending today, and we'll see you next time.